So welcome to our new video which is the CSTR in series and I know we've seen this one before but we're going to analyze it with the damn color number. What's the damn color number? If you have no idea, go back in the video. I think previous video talks about damn color. So let's suppose we got two CSTRs at least. They are the same size, that means same volume. So that's the difference. Before we didn't actually analyze same size. We are going now to analyze same size, same volume, and the damn color number. We're more uh, worried on to get in the conversion. So, and especially the how does the volume interact with respect of number of tanks. Same temperature of operation, same constant rate, and there arranged in series. That means they are dependent of the previous one. So this second reactor depends on the first reactor right here. So yeah, essentially it's everything guys. Let's do it. Let's suppose there are N reactors. So before we said they were, they were two. But now let's actually say they are N reactors. N can take any number uh, more than one at least. They have the same characteristic, I told you this volumetric flow rate is equal to this volumetric flow rate and this one here. And this volume here is equal to this volume here. And yeah, the conversion also might be the same. Just remember that we got this definition. If you don't know where do we took it, please go back in the videos. And for CA1, we got C in exactly the same but this one here okay we are just actually substituting data here for one because then we're going to analyze for two now for the second reactor that's what I was telling you we have the design equation volume equals the difference of flow rates divided by the rate of reaction two that's very important guys now we want to force it so let's take out the volume, the volumetric flow rates, and we get concentrations here. And yeah, I told you before we want to con uh, to force the concentration concepts here. And not only that, we want to substitute it for the first order reaction. So we know it's K times concentration. So we have it here. We just took away or took out our volumetric flow rate here the difference of concentration and our rate here. Now the thing here is we don't want volume, we want to solve for the second concentration. And this is just math, if you want to jump it, it's okay, but I think it's very useful if you want to follow through. So you know CA1 is this one here, see you have this one here, yes, you know this is my tau, K2 stays the same, Concentration to stay the same. Uh, concentration one I told you just before is this value and CA2 stays the same. Now I will pass CA2 here and it will become positive, which is this one here. I take out CA2 or concentration in the second tank. And yes, I have this one here. And this is just left to the right. Now I want CA2 not only this. So let's pass that dividing. CA0 stays the same, you can see it. This value stays exactly the same and the only thing that changes is this thing dividing. But we know that tau1 equals tau2, let's call it no more tau, and you know that k1 equals k2 or generic k. So let's substitute data. So actually you, we just took out this 2, 2 and this one one because they are the same and yeah you know this is like having a times a equals a square which is here that's awesome that's for our first order now the thing here is that I don't want to do it with two things I told you before I wanted to do it for n things so let's keep doing the analysis uh, let's do it for n reactors, so we will have n thing here. And remember that the color number is tau times k for the first order reaction. We just pump it up here. 
and probably you're asking yourself why this n once again just trust me guys but you will see that this number if it were 3 you will find this number 3 the initial concentration will not change this one is a constant and tau and k yes they do change but the thing here is that they are the same so we can use the same variable so anyways you should know that by far we just substitute the time color number here which is here and by definition we know this here so yeah essentially let's plug in the conversion here well we plug it here and we get this result uh, cancel concentration concentrations at the beginning our difference in conversion stay the same damn color or one plus damn color number to the n power stay the same and you know we are looking out for conversion so we get this equation here or a better way here this is the equation we wanted to 1 minus 1 dividing 1 plus the color number to the n number n number meaning the number of reactors and of course you will see that as n increases conversion increases and not only that if the color number increases this guy here plus 1 increases then the conversion also increases because this goes this guy goes up this number goes down and one minus something small will give you near one which is good now let me explain you this uh, if you want to check out the excel spreadsheet i got it in the web page just go to chemicalengineeringguide.com courses and reactor engineering go to materials or extra materials and you will find it there I just took a screenshot but essentially what I do or what I did was this I got the conversions which is all these you know conversion goes from 0 to 1 0 to 1 and this is the number of reactors sorry for not writing that but I'm here to tell you that number of reactors so probably you're asking yourself, what are these colors or why do we have many? Well, I use different damn color numbers, not only uh, conversions or different number of reactors. I also use different damn color numbers. So you can see this one is 0.1. Damn color number is 0.1. The green one is 0.5. The purple one is 1 this one blue or light blue is 10 which was here and this one blue or yeah dark blue is 100 so you can see 101 110 1 and point 0.1 look how drastic does the change in damn color number uh, makes the need of reactors so for example just let me yeah let me show you this is one reactor actually this one is very important this is when you have no series then two reactors is the first case you have a series reactor and then so on three four five six seven eight nine etc now what you want is the least number of reactors with the same characteristic of course you don't want to get with your boss and tell them uh, I got this arrangement and I will give you 20% conversion and imagine your same colleague comes here and tells you I got I need only one I don't need two reactors I need only one reactor and I will get a 90% conversion and the thing here is different than color numbers that you can move with volumetric flow rate or volume more generally volumetric flow rate of course this guy will, is going to win because we one reactor you are getting 90% with two reactors you are getting 20% uh, and this is because this damn color number is so bad like it's so low I told you guys before that you cannot improve look this one you will need a lot of reactors to get this 90% I told you before actually what we were telling you in theory that for one reactor the damn color number for 0.1 or low or lower is less than 10% uh, which is true it makes sense here and the damn color number for 10 remember this blue one 
and once again only for one you will get this one and I told you before that for them color numbers bigger than 10 you get usually 90% so I was not just telling you a, a random theory this is at least uh, true in this case so that's nice and see how the faster or the the let's see as the number increases of course you're going to increase the number of conversion you're going to have more reactors that react the material but we're analyzing the damn color number that's the interesting part how look the change here versus the look this change here or this change or this change 0 to 1 is huge so look the slope is way different in every single one of these well of course when you have two CSTRs with a damp color number of 100 adding more doesn't actually make sense you're not getting that much and probably you're expending money on these reactors so you will see it for the other case or for the other side that for a sh shitty number of damp color here you will need to increase not only one but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, blah, I don't know. Fourteen numbers, and you will still have the performance of look, they have the same conversion. Fourteen no, it's thirteen, sorry, with a damn color number of one, no, point five, but we only need three reactors. So hopefully you're getting the idea of why we are analyzing the damn color number why are we doing this in series and why does the damp color as increasing number gets better performance in conversion so once again we want to increase damp color not and we don't want to increase the number of reactors if we increase it uh, that means some money we need to buy or get or install or maintain or operate more reactors and how do you change the damp color number? Well, damp color number is essentially right low. And volume and flow rate here. So you can change the volume of the tank, this one here. But it's generally fixed, so it doesn't make that much sense. You can change the K constant, because you know that the rate here is usually rate are given by K, C, A at least. So you can change the rate or temperature. You can increase it. If you increase this one, in general, K increases. And the volumetric flow rate, how do you do that? Well, you know that here you have it, the concentration at the beginning times volumetric flow rate. So if you increase it, which is normal or normal operation, normal thing to do, you will increase the damp color number. No, sorry, decrease it. Uh, yeah, because this is going down, dividing, so if you increase it, you're going to decrease the damp color. So you want to reduce this because we want to increase the time space. Anyways, uh, to increase conversion, I told you before, the operation is to decrease volumetric flow rate, increase time in the reactor, of course, makes sense. If you decrease the volumetric flow rate, the space times uh, will decrease, no, will increase, sorry, so you're going to have more time inside the reactor, which is cool because A can react or has more time to react with B or to react into B or increase the temperature, which is very common, except for cases in which increasing temperature means any engineering uh, problem. For example, hazard problems, vapor problems, vaporization, uh, heat transfer problems, uh, cost, money, all those things are taken into consideration before just increasing the temperature. And that was the CSTR in series. We're going to see in the next video CSTRs in parallel arrangement, which is, I think, more or a little bit boring or more boring than the CSTR in series, but we need to do it. So see you in the next video.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.